So before we commit to making any edits in this document, we need to add a few more panels for the to get the interactive editing tools that we need. I will show you very briefly that InDesign does come with what's called interactive for PDF. It's well, I'll show you it. It's OK, but there's a lot of content in here um, and there's a lot of clicking around to get where you want to do. So, uh, yeah, it's there, but I never use it. I'm going to go back to basic and then up to the window menu, the home of all panels. And there is a section called interactive where well, I'm not saying we're going to need everything in here, but it's fairly easy to find all the stuff that we need for creating online publications. So first of all, we're going to choose buttons and forms. That will appear here. And then I'm going to drag that, not completely to the right hand side of the screen, but just to the left hand side of the layers panel. That tall blue line will allow us to create a second column. I'm going to let go of the mouse now. And then we can just include all of our interactive content in this second column. So we've got buttons and forms, which is going to be, well, pretty much the bread and butter of everything we're going to make inside of InDesign for interactivity. It's a kind of a central hub. We do have bookmarks. We don't necessarily need those at the moment. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to choose close. Back to window, interactive, then choose hyperlinks. Drag hyperlinks over. Now you're going to find you have to just drag it to about here to dock it underneath buttons and forms. Window, interactive, animation, click and drag and pull that. Well, it's got to be right down to the bottom this time, like so. Back to window, down to interactive, object states. Now this one we won't use as much. So I'm actually just going to put this at the side of the animation panel and click back on animation. Window, interactive, and then EPUB interactivity preview. So when I click on that, it is very small, but that's the thing you'll need to preview rollover states and any kind of animation and things like that before you publish. Now you could make this bigger. You could take your cursor down to the bottom right corner and you could drag out and make that bigger, but it's just going to get in the way and it's going to demand a lot of screen real estate. So my suggestion would be take your cursor to the tab across the top, drag it across so that we're going to make a third column in here. Let go of the mouse. Go up to the top and choose collapse to icons. Then hover your cursor over the left edge, drag that in to make that much smaller. And then when you do need it, click on the button. Now you can drag that open and make it as big as it will go. I think now there, there wasn't a limit to this really, but it, there is now a limit in the 2021 version to how big you can make that. That's as big as I can make it. You might find in the 2020, and earlier versions that you can make it go bigger than that. So when I need it, it's there. When I don't need it and I need to start working and editing, I can go back up to the symbol and it disappears. So you only need it. Click on the button. Makes life much, much easier. Go to the top to the workspace switcher menu, choose new workspace and call this, well, quite simply interactive and click OK. So that's our interactive workspace.